Right, hello everyone. Today we're going to be carrying on looking at children's entertainment. We're going to be focusing today on comic books in the 20th century. A uh, big question we're looking at today is how have comic books actually changed in popularity over time? And the starter question is to ask, are comic books still cool? Now, it's one of those funny questions. It, it depends on who you ask. It's kind of like having Marmite. Some people love it, some people hate it, and comic books are much the same. People who are into comics and like to collect them uh, certainly have their reasons, which we will look at, and other people who would prefer to either watch the film uh, or to perhaps play the video game instead. So we have Jeff. Uh, Jeff came into a pawn shop in the U.S. with some Batman and Spider-Man comic book artwork. He didn't have the actual comic books. What he had were the storyboards, the rough copies that the comic book artists would use before making the comics themselves. Uh, these are quite rare to have. Uh, these were often kept by the artists themselves, often in their own portfolios. Uh, but he managed to come into, uh, into owning one of these. Uh, he brought it in. Surprised when he had an expert come in to actually assess it, uh, to find out that one individual doll was worth well over one thousand dollars. And comic book being expensive is nothing new. So here we have Captain America, we have the Green Lantern, Batman, uh, Archie Comics, Superman, uh, the first appearance of Batman. Uh, these are all comics that came out in the late 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s. And these comic books in mint condition, so in a plastic wrap, uh, no bent edges, no marks on the pages, uh, can sell for upwards of 5.5 million pounds, uh, 725,000 pounds, nearly 850,000 pounds, a million, just over a million, 1.3 million, 3,450,000, 5.58 million, and just under a million pounds as well. Uh, and this is all connected to supply and demand, especially in the comic book prices. Now, sometimes a comic that looks really valuable can actually be worthless, uh, and some with minor damage can still be worth tens of thousands. It's kind of like looking at a pair of shoes where, you know, some of these cost over a thousand pounds for shoes that look like they've already been worn. Uh, and then we have amazing looking shoes uh, just for under or just over 20 pounds. In the early part of the 20th century, the, the, century the publishers of comics identified a lucrative juvenile market and, and by 1914, 1914 comics began targeting, targeting eight 12 year olds. Year old Rainbow, Rainbow which ran from 1914 to 1956 is generally accepted to be now, the first comic. Kids, uh, Paper the aimed specifically at children. For to uh, other popular years, comics with a magnet, the of a boy 1908 to 1940, uh, which Bunter featured the antics of the boys of Greyfriars School in and the its 1930s and was most famous comics, character Billy Bunter and its companion comic paper gem, 1907, 1939, set in St. Jim's School. In a few the 1930s uh, was Bino the heyday of comics and hot artistry. The appearance of Crackers, 1929-1941, The Dandy, 1937-2012, and The Beano, 1938-present. The Beano introduced a new style of art history which included speech and thought bubbles in some stories. These comics also introduced quite powerful gag humor with authority hating Dennis the Menace and his sidekick Dog Nasher and Lord Snooty and his pals which made digs at the class structure of the times. The Second World War was bad for comics because of the paper shortage but the Dandy and the Beano remained popular. So as promised, we're going to take a look at Beano. Uh, Beano is a very popular comic to collect. It was produced on a, a weekly and a monthly basis. Uh, and there are loads of copies floating around that you could even get your hands on today. Uh, Beano was mainly aimed at boys. And it's a good opportunity for us to use some historical context to actually explore why Beano appears the way he does. So if we just to zoom in uh, on Beano. So this is a copy from 1938. 
And those of you who are familiar with uh, our study of America, you would know that kind of the mid to late 1930s wasn't exactly the best time uh, to be a black person in the United States, or even for that matter, in Britain. Now, black people weren't given very good jobs. Uh, President Roosevelt's New Deal essentially excluded them. And Bino is very telling of racial values of this time period. Now, there are some significant racial stereotypes, which I'm sure we don't need to delve too deeply into, uh, but mainly the appearance of Bino is going to show us that perhaps the artists who were involved in making Bino didn't really see blacks and whites as equal within society. After the Second World War, there was an increased demand for more comics. Uh, this is when Buster, Topper, and Beezer became quite popular. Uh, it was also around this time that the comic annual started to appear in kids' stockings uh, as a stocking stuffer. Now, after the Second World War, society had changed a lot, and kids were looking for new types of entertainment, but so were parents. Uh, the Second World War did remind people that life can be quite short, and families wanted to be able to spend leisure time Together. Now, if that didn't mean going over to Butlins for a family holiday, but it also meant entertainment within the home. Uh, Topper, Beezer, uh, Buster, these were all very child-friendly comics uh, that parents were more than happy to, to buy as they were not only affordable, uh, but they also pushed for skills in literacy and creativity, which were seen as quite important in the child's development. In the 1950s, the influence of American culture extended into comics, and parents actually became a little bit alarmed by the horror stories within these comics. If we think back to our unit about Queen Elizabeth, we know that witchcraft was something that really frightened people, and if you were accused of witchcraft, you could be put in jail and tortured or even possibly burned at the stake. Now, the comic Eagle in the 1950s, they brought out their new hero called Dan Dare, pilot of the future. And we'll notice that in some of the kids' TV shows as well, mainly Dick Barton's Secret Agent, uh, these were new characters that were very much so glorifying the exploits of soldiers in the Second World War. Uh, this would make young boys look up to potentially their dads or their uncles or people who were involved in that conflict, and they were being glorified in these comics for kids. Now, comics have mainly been a very male-dominated field, and comic books designed for girls really didn't become that popular. Now, in the Victorian era, there were papers which were designed uh, with very few illustrations, and they were produced to kind of instill the morals of the time. So in other words, for girls, uh, they just had books, and these books were about being a housewife. Now, the school friend began in 1919. This was aimed at the middle and upper class girls. Uh, girls Crystal appeared in 1935. Uh, and finally, Eagle in 1951 came up with a all girls comic with the amazing title called Girl. Now, by the mid to late 1960s, the taste for the British youth was going to change a little bit more. Uh, many started to abandon comics, and instead they went more towards the TV uh, and looking at books in the public library. So we've got some discussion points. Our first question is to look at what we can learn about the changes in children's entertainment so far. So we've looked at uh, kind of entertainment in the medieval era, We've looked at the Victorians, and now we're looking in the 20th century. So you might be familiar with Bruegel's Children's Games. Uh, this is the painting that has loads of different games that kids would play kind of in the 15 and 1600s. Most of these games don't really require any specialist equipment, uh, especially this one here, where you would simply squat in a corner and see how much you could pee. And then we've got modern day. Uh, we've got the PS4, Xbox, Wii, and we can just see over time, especially in the modern era, where the role that electronic entertainment has had in the development of kids' entertainment. 
Now, why were comics so popular in the 1950s? Uh, as we already mentioned, comics were a great way for kids to get involved in reading. And we know that even today, reading isn't something that everybody enjoys to do. But if you're reading something that's incredibly interesting to you, you're far more likely to stick to it. And even in the 1950s, looking at the basic lifestyle of most kids, uh, they didn't typically have a lot at home. We can see a photo here of a family in the mid-1950s, a uh, rather basic sitting room. And again, the kids are simply playing uh, with a puzzle. And why are comics less popular today? Uh, many of you might have never come into contact with a comic before, uh, and it has to do with the types of entertainment that kids today are more into. And again, we talked about the role of electronic entertainment versus comic books. So before we go, we're going to look at a few of our bonus facts about comics. So our first bonus fact is the Hulk was actually supposed to be gray, not green. Uh, this just came down to a printing error. In the 1940s, printers were incredibly complicated and they involved putting in specific colors of dyes that would be injected at certain times and mixed in certain ways. And when the Hulk was printed, uh, the gray actually came out green. Now, rather than rerunning all of the comics again through the printer, the, the comic book designers just decided, let's just leave it green. Batman actually pays Superman's salary. So in the Batman comics, uh, Bruce Wayne, he is part owner of the Daily Planet, uh, which is a newspaper. And that's a newspaper that Clark Kent, who is Superman in disguise, actually works for. And who are the most published comic book characters of all time? Now, immediately that comes to mind, we have a few. We've got Superman, Batman, and the third most published comic book character is actually Donald Duck. So that's it for today. Uh, go ahead on to show my homework and complete the quiz, uh, all to do with comics in the 20th century.